Welcome back to another part in my MVVM Jetpack Compose course for beginners. In this part, I'm going to show you the Recycler View equivalent for Jetpack Compose and also the Card View equivalent for Jetpack Compose. So specifically, what we're going to be doing is building out these cards. So notice that these list items sit in the card. They have kind of an elevation here. They have an image, they have a title, and they have this little score for the recipe. And if I scroll, this is very much the same as the Recycler View. It's exactly the same. It might look a little laggy for you because it's uh, it's on the emulator but on my real device like if you run this on a real device it's very very smooth the first thing that we're gonna be doing before we start building any composables is we need to get this default image into our project so here it is here's the default image it kind of just looks like an empty plate with a fork and a glass this is the image that's gonna show when uh, you know an image can't load or while an image is loading it's always important to have a default image so you can get this by going to the source code for this project go to you know pretty much any branch the master branch is fine go to app source main resource drawable and this this image is called empty underscore plate dot png so you're going to want to right click on this save it to your computer somewhere once you have it on your computer somewhere go to android studio and you can either just drag it into the drawable folder right here or you can use the resource manager over here on the left just click on this plus icon go to import drawables find wherever that image is saved here it is for me empty plate dot png hit next and then import that image now that should be in your drawable folder so here there it is empty plate png there it is nice and small just 32 kilobytes very important to have a very 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 small low resolution image you want to have it have it very small don't occupy lots of space otherwise your your views can lag or your list can lag all right so let's start building this composable that's that's going to look like this card so this is the composable that we want to build this this individual card with an image a title and then a score so this we want to reuse this over and over again in our recycler view basically think of like a, a view holder in recycler view the the layout for the view holder this is kind of what we're what we're aiming for here so go into presentation right click go to new package call this package components so I'm creating a package that I'm going to keep all of these kind of custom composables inside of so create a new Kotlin file and call this recipe card and then create that file now minimize this and let's build out this composable so obviously we want to annotate this with at composable do fun we're calling it recipe card and the function arguments are going to be a recipe so it takes a recipe as input and it also takes a function as input an on click function or a, a function function called on click and this is for you know what happens when we actually click on one of those recipes then we want to we want to execute that function I'm gonna give you lots of room here to give you a better view so what uh, what comes first well the card view equivalent for jetpack compose is actually a card so we just call it a card and we can now pass uh, arguments to this card to kind of dictate the styling the first argument is the shape argument this determines the 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 round how rounded the corners are we're going to use a material theme constants file to access a constant that defines you know some shapes now this is probably going to be a little confusing to you you know what is this material theme thing this is actually a constants file that contains a bunch of uh, like styling constants so here if I type material theme we have colors we have shapes we have typography if I go into typography we have like body button caption h1 two three through six a bunch of different pre-built styling kind of styles i guess is the way to put it and then you have of course colors so if i went to colors and then you have like you know a bunch of different colors uh, the takeaway here that i want you to know right now is that this is a pre-built sort of class which a bunch with a bunch of pre-built styles that you can use easily in your application and you can customize this and we're going to be customizing it later so we're not customizing it in this video we're just going to use the ones that are already available to us so later in this course we're going to be customizing this just know for now that it contains a bunch of kind of styles that you use in your app you know also actually just to show you um you know you don't have to use the material theme like i could have done you know if you look at the return type of this it's a corner based shape so you could just create a corner based shape here as a constructor the constructor takes a bunch of arguments the top left top right bottom right and bottom uh bottom left and it takes corner size objects so you could say you know top uh, left corner size and then you just define what the size is going to be if I want it to be like 5 dp that would mean that the the top left corner is rounded 
uh, 5DP. That, that would be how you could do this. And then I'll obviously specify the other ones, but we're gonna use the pre-built one that just comes with the material theme. So we can use either small, uh, we have medium, we have large, and those are just pre-built kind of corner based shapes that you can reference. It's just to make things uh, more convenient. So again, we're gonna be going over the theming stuff later in this course because we're gonna be you know, customizing that entire material theme. The next argument will be the modifier. So get the correct one. We're gonna to wanna to get the Android X Compose UI modifier. Now add some padding. We can add padding to the bottom, set yeah, that equal to uh, 60p, get that import. Also do some padding to the top, 60p and then go to the next one, so fill max width. Remember, we want this card to fill the, the maximum width possible, and then add a clickable attribute to this modifier and pass that on click function. So we've, theoretically, we're gonna have an on click function that gets passed as an argument to the card, and then through this clickable modifier, it will execute that function when it gets clicked. Now the last attribute will be the elevation. Every card, every good card has some elevation. The amount of elevation we'll use, I think we'll just do, uh, we'll do like 8 DP. And I didn't choose these for any particular reason. You know, I was just playing around with it and I thought that that looked good. So that's the, the starting point for our card. Now, now, what do we want the layout of this card to look like? Well, if we refer back to the finished version of the app, we have uh, you know a, an image at the top, and then we have another row down here with two entries, uh, a title and a score. So essentially here we have like a column. The first item in the column is this right here, this image. Then the second item in the column is this row right here with the title and the score. So a pretty simple one to build. We'll just open up a column here. The first item inside of this column will be the image. So you always wanna to check to see if the recipe actually has the thing that you're gonna be using. So we're gonna check for that featured image, just checking to see if it's null. If it's not null, then we have the URL passed as input. Now currently we're not actually gonna use this URL yet. We're just gonna load the dummy image for now. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to asynchronously load these resources from the internet. We're gonna be using Glide for that. So right now I'm just gonna use the dummy image. So I'm gonna use an image uh, composable, just get that from the composable uh, dependency. Now do bitmap equals image resource r dot drawable dot empty plate. So this will be that empty plate image that we just got at the beginning of this video. Then we want to add a modifier to this. So modifier dot fill max width. Whoops, go to the next line. And then we want to do preferred height and set that to 225 dp. Not for any particular reason. I just think 225 dp looks good. Now set some kind of a content scale. So we can do content scale dot crop. So an important thing to know about this image resource function, if I control click on this and you go up to the top here, there's a very important kind of heading. It says synchronously load an image resource, synchronously being the key word here. And it also says note, this API is transient and will likely be removed for encouraging async resource loading. So this, this function is not good. That's essentially what it's saying here. It's saying this function loads resources on the main thread. It, it loads it synchronously on whatever thread you call it in. So this is not good. This is very likely going to slow down our UI significantly because for every list entry, for every recipe, it's gonna be loading the resource synchronously on the main thread. So that's a big no-no with Android development. You never wanna do anything on the main thread. So again, like I said, we're just gonna be showing this default image for now in this video. And then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to load the actual URL using glide and we're going to do that asynchronously. So just kind of, you know, put a pin in this and we're going to come back to it in the next video. So now the next kind of thing in our column is that row that will contain the title and the score. So I'm going to do recipe.title again let to check to see if that title is null. Now create a new row in here and open this up. Make sure to get that Jetpack Compose import. Now we're going to add a modifier to this row. So write modifier equals modifier dot fill, whoops, I wanna to go to the next line, dot fill maximum width, and then add some padding, and we'll do, you know, 12 dp on the top, we'll do on the bottom, we'll do 12 dp also. So top and bottom, 12 dp, and then at the start, so the far right, we'll do 8 dp, 8 dot dp, and then lastly, end equals, we'll also do 8 dp. So 8 dp on the end, the start, 12 dp on the top and the bottom, just to kind of bring everything into the center a little bit. Now let's add the content of this row. So the first one is the title. So let's do text 
equals title and do a comma. I like to move this to the next line just to make it look a little better. Now let's add a modifier to this text. So modifier dot fill max width. Now this is something you probably haven't seen before. I don't think we've gone over this. I'm gonna do fill max width and then specify 0.85 as a float. So what I'm saying here is occupy the entire width up to 85%. So in other words, occupy 85% of the width. Then I wanna do wrap content width and do alignment.start. So if we take a look at the finished version of the app, here in this row, this is the row that we're work working on right here, we have the title and the score. We want the title to be aligned to the start and the score to be aligned to the end. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm saying fill the maximum width up to 85%. That makes sure that there's 15% left over for that score section. And I'm saying wrap the content width and align it to the start. Now the last attribute that I'm gonna add is a styling attribute. And we're gonna reference that material theme constants file like I did with the, uh, with the um, with the rounded corner up here for our card, we're gonna access some typography, so some styling for text. So typography, and I'm gonna use H5. Now, if any of you are familiar with web development, I'm sure you know what like you know what H1 is, H2, H3, H whatever. All of these different H tags are different kind of heading tags. So for this one, I'm gonna use H5, which is the second smallest. H6 is the smallest. H5 is the second smallest. And then for the score, so for this little section over here, I'm gonna use one that is even smaller than that. So we're going to use an H6 for that. And again, these can be customized and we're going to be doing that later in this course. Next, we're going to work on the rating. So let's build another text composable down below and move this to the next line. So this will be recipe.rating and I have to call two string on this because it's an integer. If you hover over the type here, it is a nullable integer. So I'm calling two string on that to you know cast it to a string so we can actually put it in the text. Now modifier equals modifier and we'll do fill max width. So occupy the remaining width, but that's only gonna be 85% of, or sorry, 15% of the width because remember this one occupies 85. Uh, and then go to the next line and do wrap content, whoops, wrap content width and say alignment, alignment dot end. And one last thing we need to call on this modifier that we didn't need to call on the text modifier up here is the align attribute. So I'm calling dot align and then doing alignment whoops, alignment dot center vertically. And I'm gonna talk about why in just a second. I wanna draw a diagram for you because it's not gonna make sense, I don't think, unless you see a diagram. It's kinda of hard hard to picture. So now the styling, as I said, for this one is gonna be material theme dot typography dot H6. So the text for this one is gonna be smaller than the text for this one. H5 is larger than H6. So now why did I need to center this one vertically, but I didn't need to center this one vertically? So as I said, this one's a hard one to picture without using a diagram, so I'm gonna draw a diagram. So I'm gonna draw this card here. So just imagine this, this is the card. Here's the card for you know this entry over here. We have the title section down here, and I know this is this this kind of height is much larger than you know this this height here, but I wanna really emphasize something. So here's the image, here's you know, here's where your hamburger would be that you're gonna eat. Here's the food up in the picture. Now down below here is the title and the rating. So I'll just write the title in here in really big text. Let's say that's the title. And then down here, uh, the rating would be much smaller. So what happens down here in our composable is the title dictates the height because this, remember this one is the, H, uh, the H5 element. So the text size is bigger. Whereas this one is the H6 element, so the text size is smaller. So what this looks like here for the, the rating is actually there's, there's an invisible kind of alignment line that gets drawn on the top of the title. And then the score, whatever that score is, gets aligned to the top of that. So the distance from the top of the score to, and then the distance from the bottom of the score to the bottom, these are not even by default. So what we need to do is we need to align this thing in the center. So let me erase this. And that's why we need to center it vertically. So by calling center vertical, it places this thing in the center so that the space here to here and the space here to here is the same. So this is kind of aligned right in the middle of one another. That's why we need to center this one and we didn't need to center this one. This one dictates the height, whereas this one just gets aligned by default to the top of that one. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Now you know why we needed to align this one, center it vertically, whereas we don't need to center this one vertically. 
So there is our recipe card. Now, how do we use this recipe card? Well, we are gonna go into our recipe list fragment. So let's go into recipe list, recipe list fragment, and scroll down and we can delete everything in here that we have currently. We don't need to print anything to the log. We don't need to add a random button or anything like that. Now we want to just display this list. So here we have a, an observable um, data structure that we can now you know, put into a list. And for that, we're gonna use a lazy column. And also notice here that you have lazy column four and lazy column four index, which are deprecated. They were deprecated in the new alpha 09 release of Jetpack Compose. So that's why we're using this, this other, or the, the newest way, I guess you could say, lazy column. So click and enter on that. If you use a constructor, it forces you to uh, pass the content as a function here. You can do that. So you could like, you know, have your content here and, you know, pass your content in into inside of the function. Instead, you could also, you know, not use a function, then just open this up and you can put your content in here. It doesn't matter whichever way you choose. Also, you know, you could you could do um, attributes in here too. Like this takes a modifier. You could just hold down control and take a look at all the things that it accepts. You have a modifier, lazy list state, padding, blah, 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 blah. Bunch of different stuff here. The only thing that we care about in this video is the actual contents of the list. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can see here that it takes a lazy list scope or this is the scope for the content. If I click on this and I go down to this lazy list scope thing, so control click on this, there's a bunch of different uh, interface functions. So you can use this function here, which is a list of items and there's the item content. So that would be like, oh, I'm getting a bunch of updates here. Uh, that would be like our, our recipe card fragment. You could pass that. You could use the single item. So this is for a, a single item. You could use the items index, which is the same as the items, except for there's an index parameter that's passed to each item. So that's kind of convenient. So those are the three kind of functions that are available. We're going to use the items indexed one because later when it comes to writing some, some of our business logic in the view model, that index is going to come in handy. So, so I'm not going to explain too much about why we need the index right now, but just know that we will be using that later. So now go into recipe list fragment and inside of our kind of our scope here, our lazy list scope. I can write items indexed. That was one of the functions that was available in that interface. It takes an argument called items and I can set that equal to the recipes. And then I want to open this up and I can do, I can tell it, you know, what, what am I, what am I inflating for each individual recipe? And this, this items index, remember it takes two arguments or it, it passes two arguments into the Lambda, the index, and then the list item itself. For us, that means a recipe. So what it'll do, it's gonna loop through each one of the recipes, it's gonna spit out an index, it's gonna spit out a recipe, and then we can tell it what we want to show. Well, we wanna show a recipe card. So getting that import, I can say recipe equals that recipe, and on click, we'll just set that equal to an empty function for now, but we will be handling the cl clicks uh, later in the course. Because obviously if you click a recipe, like if you go to the finished version of the app, you click on a recipe, that takes you to the next fragment. All right, so we're almost done. Just gonna go into the view model now. So go into recipe list view model. And I couldn't remember what I did in the previous video or a couple of videos ago in the view model here. So I'm just gonna change this up a little bit. I'm gonna write an init function and just call new search. I'm not sure if I actually built this function in the video where I built out the repository or built out the view model. View model. I think I actually just wrote, um, I think I just had like this inside of here. So build out a function called new search and then just cut this out, paste it in here and then just call new search. And uh, that's all I want to do. So we're gonna be searching chicken and uh, we expect to see some, some list results. Now, just keep in mind though, in our recipe card, remember we are showing that, we're just showing that default image. We're not showing the actual image. So the image will not be coming through. We're gonna work on that in the next video. So now let's run this and take a look at our list. All right, so there's our list and it looks like it's working. We have our titles, we have our scores, and we have no images. Also, if I scroll this, it is extremely laggy. It is like crazy, crazy laggy. There's no way this is usable. And that's because of that synchronously loading function for the image resource right here. Remember, again, I just wanna mention that we're gonna be fixing that in the next video and also showing the real images, not just the default image. So there you have it. That is the equivalent of a recycler view with Jetpack Compose and the equivalent of a card view with Jetpack Compose. And I know there's lots of questions still up in the air, like, you know, what is this material? material theme thing? How do we, you know, asynchronously load the real images? Uh, what are we using the index for? 
lots of stuff I know, but this video is already long enough and we're gonna be going through the rest of this in the rest of the course. Now, before I go, of course, do not forget to leave your engagement. Do not forget to leave a like. You guys have been doing a great job. And also for those of you who have not registered on my website yet, make sure to register on my website. I'm gonna be publishing all of these lectures probably early next week on my website. It'll be free there also, but it'll track your progress. So you get, you know, as you complete the lectures, you get like a check mark that says you've completed it. It tracks the, the progress of each individual lecture that you watch. So like if you watch, you know, 60% of a lecture, it'll say that you watched 60% of that lecture. If you come back next time, you can carry on from that exact same point. It's just a more convenient way to watch the course. So again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.